My name is Derek Brown. I'm head teacher of Ashmole Academy. Ashmole Academy is a mixed comprehensive school in North London. We're mixed both in terms of gender, but also in terms of ability. We take the full ability range within the school. Uh, we also recruit very close to the school, about within one mile. So we're very much a community school servicing the local community. Our passion is to provide the local community with the very best standard of education they can possibly achieve. And our daily motto is, excellence is a habit, not an event. We achieve that as a state school, not as a private school, as a state school, through three things. First of all, we believe that outstanding teachers is a key to any success. And therefore, we, we spend time and effort to recruit the best talent and also train those teachers to be even further outstanding so that we maintain ourselves as an outstanding school. Secondly, it has to be technology. The young people today are so used to communicating in a technology-rich environment. But also technology enables us to expand, enrich and extend the learning opportunities for young people, getting the very best in terms of performance. And thirdly, we want to create the very best learning environment for our young people and also have an atmosphere which is conducive to learning. My role within the school is to take care of the implementation of technology within the classroom so although we have the IT support who manages it and make sure it's all operational my role is to make sure that the teachers are supported in using that so there is effective use that takes place in the classroom. Part of Ashmole's focus for the future is to develop the home learning so a strong focus this year that Andy has looked into is using video as a an, a motivational form so he's used that within his assemblies but also through PE lessons in video the students who are presenting or doing a classroom activity that can be uploaded uh, for the students to gain access through our learning platform Fronter. Uh, so on there we can upload material for the students to use whether it be exam questions or podcasts, videos made both by teachers and by students. The staff here are very good at supporting each other. They have a quite a strong policy on ensuring that staff training takes place on anything that is brought in. When we are looking to implement or try out new equipment, we usually use a small team who then trial it, see how they go with it, develop their knowledge and their experimental use if it is a go ahead and we then do purchase some of that technology, then there is already the support system in place to provide uh, staff training to the rest of the staff. The staff are very experimental with their teaching, trying new ideas, and with that comes the using the technology. I was lucky enough to be part of the first round of the iTech project and as part of that I used a piece of internet software to group my students. I have three teaching groups for AS Chemistry and I really wanted them to work together across the groups um, so students that weren't necessarily in the same lessons as each other working together to produce uh, revision materials. I'm really keen on the active expression hardware I think it's a really useful resource to have in the classroom and I like to use it ad hoc but also plan for its use in my lessons. One of the most valuable parts of the expressions would have been the self-paced software. I have started to use that lots with my A-level groups, it's particularly when it comes to topics that they've come across before but are synoptic, they need to look at them again, we need to review them. So rather than teach the whole topic again, what I've started to do is develop resources on the self-paced question base so that they, you have an ability to level the questions and so what I've done is I've set the level of demand for the different questions so that they become increasingly more tricky. I set it up so that students can't retry. They can only answer a certain number incorrectly in a particular level before they stop getting questions altogether. And so what that allows me to do is see where they get knocked out. When do they stop getting the questions? Because that's when they've found it tricky. And that's because on the results pane, 
it's all colour coded with the different levels, I can see what, what colour, what level they get knocked out at, and then I can give them a task to then complete based on whichever level it was that they found the most tricky. When I heard about flip learning, it was quite an exciting idea of can we create some videos and get students to learn without actually having to teach them? Um, so I, that was the first instance, and I thought, okay, that's, that could be a really good idea. It might be quite powerful and breed some independence. And then I took the brief and just said, I don't actually want to create the videos because the, the time, is, it just takes too long to do it. So I actually said to the students, go and find your videos on the internet, use Google, see what you can find. And just, just as an interesting idea to see what came back, and the results were pretty phenomenal. Got some fantastic notes from students where they'd referenced websites and um, we, we then went, moved on to look at how we could apply that in the lesson. So just getting students to look at what, what it was they'd actually figured out, feedback to class. And then we actually just answered some questions for, for the rest of the lesson where we got to move on and the progress made was, was so huge because I didn't have to actually go through the basics. Then we moved on to actually testing and seeing whether the impact was real or not and, and can actually comparing it against another group of students who didn't have to get to do this and the results were phenomenal actually a, a 10 percent uh, improvement for the group that, that had learned it themselves versus the group who'd been taught so the major benefit of the flip learning was that we actually managed to get students to learn outside of the classroom and then bring that learning into the classroom and that was quite a powerful tool for us the flip learning is a scheme where the students are asked to research a topic at home which will come up in the next lesson so for example in maths you're, you're learning integration you go home and learn integration how it works get research from that subject and in class you will do class questions based on the topic you've learned i think flipped learning is where you as a student yourself you become more independent so uh, when you go home you get given uh, work to do from a topic from a certain topic in maths for example differentiation and you go home and you find out research on that particular topic and when you come back you present it to your, your findings to your teammates and your workmates in the class and you talk about it together and that's really important for me because as a student you, you learn conventionally from a teacher from a teacher's point of view but when you're with students and you collaborate together you can get a different perspective on what you're learning so I find that really important for me because that's really improved my way of thinking in mathematics. I really like using the active expression devices in my lessons. They're engaging. Pupils find it really enjoyable to use them. Um, what's really important is that everybody gets the chance to express their opinion or answer a question. So when assessing pupils' progress, I can see how much progress everybody has made, not just a select few. I also really like the fact that I can use the devices as a starting point for discussion. I can see who's answered what, and that then means I can ask them a follow-up probing question. Pupils can also see what other pupils have responded with, which gets them to challenge their own opinion and reflect on their opinion and their answer. It makes them come up with a better answer for their opinion. It can help them compare their answer to somebody else's as well. What's really nice about one of the functions is that I can save the results of a particular vote and I can come back to those at a later date. Whether that's at the end of the lesson or at the end of a topic, it's really nice for the pupils to be able to see that they've made progress or even that they've changed their opinion on a certain issue. This helps me learn in a new exciting way and it's a bit like a technological quiz so um, this is good for people who are like me and really like technology. I think the active expression device is really good because it's a fun way to interact with the class. Everybody gets a chance to answer the questions so you can see other people's opinions apart from the teachers which might change your perspective and what you think about the topic. My involvement with iTech began um, this year in February when I was invited to take part uh, in Brussels for the Future Learning Classroom with iTech. Um, the purpose of that um, classroom was to gather lots of teachers from across Europe to work collaboratively on new projects um, and new technologies. There was a 
teacher from Turkey called Belgin, who I met there, who I've since been working with um, on the new cycle, um, cycle four and cycle five. And there's another teacher involved called Fabia, who's also has some excellent ideas, especially in my subject area of technology, um, who I've been reading a lot of her blogs and things she's been doing, which have been excellent. Uh, within my subject, um, I use a lot of different technologies, software-based um, and hardware-based. Um, I definitely find technology one of the most inspirational tools as a teacher to motivate my students. But most recently, uh, we acquired a 3D printer, which plays in really well with my subject in particular, which we've managed to incorporate in um, our A-level students' coursework this year and aspects of my teaching from lower school all the way to upper school. We ensure that the design process is embedded across all projects. My students, particularly at AS, which are years um, ages 16 and 17, use that design process in their coursework. Their, their coursework is to research, design and make an architectural model, which they've done with some excellent results this year. This is my AS um, graphics coursework. Um, it was based on a Huff House and I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I mainly looked at having bright, brighter colours, different shapes, and I was mainly looking at Morocco, Egypt. My main feature was this kind of outdoor bar. I was going to put um, a straw roof, but when I tested it out, it didn't really go right. The materials, they were flaking a bit. And I decided to use laser ply, um, just because it was easier, and I liked the fact that I could stain it with this specific colour. Um, I like this pattern and I mainly went on 2D designer and designed all the little petals myself um, using different tools. This is my A-level, AS-level coursework. Uh, our brief was to design a hoof house replica and uh, to design the garden and out furnishings for the uh, building. We had to keep it as close to a hoof house as possible but with our own sort of window style and choice of what was going around it so that each house looked unique in its own way. Um, we started off by researching what hoof houses look like. We started looking at the original ones, some of the deviations that were made and then went on to making our own ones following um, plans of original hoof houses and changing them. We then uh, looked into what we would like to go around it so we were researching different uh, furnishings and sort of garden furniture and then we went on to doing models of the houses including uh, 2D drawing models, we did 3D models on SketchUp on the computer and then we went into uh, making. Once we bought and got all the stuff that we needed we cut the houses out, built them and started making the rest of the garden. So putting the grass down, putting all the features in and then the circuitry at the end. Promethean was first attracted to iTech because it involves teachers in every phase of the project. The research phase not only takes into account the economic and political drivers affecting education, but also the realities of the teachers and the voices of students. Teachers contribute to scenario development and participatory design workshops alongside members of Promethean product teams so that innovative scenarios can be prototyped and tested. A good example of this is the feature developed in Active Inspire, which enables the iTech widgets to be embedded in the flip chart learning environment. Working with innovative schools, especially those schools that use personalised and collaborative approaches to teaching and learning, such as Ashmore Academy and Trentham High School, iTech and Promethean have piloted the learning stories and learning activities in more than 60 classrooms in the UK. Teachers and students share their experiences within school and across school, in blogs and forums, and through Promethean Planet online communities, this innovative practice is disseminated and mainstreamed. From the pilots, we can identify the emerging themes which are changing pedagogical and technological practice, such as flipped learning, inquiry, students as producers, learning in teams,
and learning outside. The most radical changes seen are the classrooms which now have a greater emphasis on knowledge sharing and collaboration and less on the teacher just transferring knowledge. Ashmore exemplifies a great UK iTech innovative school, keeping pace with changes in pedagogy and technology and willing to open its doors so its advanced teaching practices can be adopted and exploited by all European schools.